everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. If you see the background, if it looks like a mess, I don't know what it looks like for you, um, but it's a mess for me. I have descended into total chaos. This apartment, total chaos. It's gonna be chaos for the next week. Just do me a favor and ignore it. Thank you. So today is Tuesday, May the something, and we move next Wednesday. So I have eight days left in this apartment, eight days to pack up everything. I did no packing in the last vlog, as you would have seen, and so that means I need to do it now, this week. Um, we also have plans like every single night with people because we're moving states away, and so we want to see all our friends before we go. So it's gonna be a week of chaos. It's gonna be a week of a lot of fun too. So I'm excited for it. To kick us off with the reading part of things, I do have an update for you. I did finish the plot this morning, which I was updating you on in my last reading vlog. I was about halfway through, a little over halfway through the last time I was telling you about this. And I really enjoyed the beginning part of it. I was really hooked, I was really interested in what was going on. It was a slow burn and I was feeling that. And I was a little worried that the ending was gonna make or break it. And unfortunately, the ending was pretty disappointing to me. <laughs> the biggest thing I had with this book was it was incredibly predictable to me. Shortly after I updated you and I was probably like about that far into the book, I figured out who the person was. I figured out what was going on, but our main character didn't figure it out until like the last five pages of the book. I won't give you any spoilers. Don't worry. Um, if you missed my previous reading vlog and you don't even know what this book is about, you could watch that or I'll just tell you now. It is about this author who publishes a book and then he can never really get success again. So he starts teaching an MFA program. He has a student who's like a jerk and he says he has the best idea for a book ever, but he doesn't want to share it with anyone, but he eventually shares it with him. And and then the teacher just like goes on with his life. A couple years later, he checks in on the dude, like Google searching to see did he ever publish the book, what's going on with him. He finds out that guy died. And so then he decides to take that story idea and write it himself and he becomes super successful. And then someone starts blackmailing him that they're going to expose that he stole that story, that it's not his story. And so the mystery is who is blackmailing him for stealing the story if the guy is dead, but then also what like the plot twist is, like what the amazing plot is that the book was so good that he stole and it became a sensational idea. You also get excerpts of the novel that he wrote within this book as well. So you're like really starting to invest in that and then try to figure out what went on in the plot of the book as well. Like I said, the biggest issue I have with this was incredibly predictable to me. There were not enough red herrings. There were not enough twists and turns, not enough thrills. When I'm reading a thriller, I really want it to be thrilling and exciting and surprising. And it just didn't give me that. That doesn't discount what I said about the book previously, that I think it was well-written, that I was intrigued with it by the premise, but I just was a little disappointed in the ending, which is also how I felt with the show The Undoing, which is an adaptation of another book that this author wrote, which I didn't read the book, but I did watch that show and I thought the ending was predictable and disappointing, but the rest of it I really enjoyed. So I don't know, it's hard to like grapple with that when you're figuring out your thoughts on a thriller. Like if the ending lets you down, does that mean the book is bad or does that mean like the ending was just hard to pull off and it just like you have high expectations when you read a lot of thrillers or watch a lot of thrillers so I gave this like a three star rating it was good the ending was disappointing but I did think it was well written and I would probably read more books from this author in the future this just probably won't make my list of like my top favorite thrillers of the year as for what I'm reading next and what I'll be reading in the rest of this video I have no idea right now um, I have like 15 ish books that are still out and not packed away yet which I need to reduce down to like three books because realistically I'm not going to read that much this week. I can also listen to audiobooks and use that as a way to be able to pack more books away. So I think what I'm going to do is post an Instagram poll of just some of my books or maybe a couple. Maybe I'll post a couple polls. I don't know how I'm going to do it because I have a lot of books I'm interested in right now. But I'm going to post some kind of poll on Instagram and see what you guys vote for and what you want me to read in this video. And I'll just let you control my reading for the week. Um, so I will be putting a theme on this casual weekly reading blog because I can't seem to resist doing that. But for now, I do have to get to work, get some work done for the day. Um, then this evening, I will be in a packing bonanza because it's one of the only evenings that I have left where I don't have plans and I'm gonna be able to put a lot away. So I will see you then. Hello, I have reached the end of my work day. I worked later than usual um, and now I'm starving and it's time for dinner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cook dinner. And I think I'm going to listen to the rest of the John Green audiobook that I was listening to, this new book, The Anthropocene Reviewed. I only have 30 minutes left so I can finish it while I cook. 
I'm so I think that'll be a good time. Haven't even updated you on this yet, but Cooper has been condemned to cone life because he injured a toenail and he was licking it a lot. And now he has to be in a cone so he can let his toenail heal. And he is not thrilled about it, to say the least. The tail wag says otherwise. See, it's not so bad. results of the poll to share to tell you what I'm going to be reading. So I narrowed down my top 15 or so picks to a top eight selection and I asked you guys over on my Instagram and on YouTube which of these eight books I should prioritize and which you want to see me read this week and the results are in and these were the winners. I kind of expected the push to win and get a lot of attention because that one's just been talked about a lot recently. It's kind of like a thriller, I guess is how it's been marketed, but I think it's more of like a literary fiction suspense type book. It has something to do with a woman having a baby and like regretting it or something. I'm not entirely sure, but it's been talked about a lot. So I'm not too surprised that this one won. Same for The Hunting Wives. I'm not surprised that got a lot of votes because that's also another one that is newly released it's a thriller it's been talked about a lot it was a book of the month club book so I kind of anticipated that one to get a lot of votes as well but I am super surprised to see that Thursday murder club be such a top pick I have not really heard many people talk about this I think it's more popular in Europe right now than it is in the United States but I think it sounds really good it's more of like a cozy mystery vibe I think it's about these people in a retirement home who get together and have like a little murder club where they talk about true crime I guess but then they get caught up in a real life murder mystery going on. It's also the start of a series. It's going to be at least another book out in the series. So very intrigued by that one. And then I was also very surprised that The Upstairs House by Julia Fine was in the top four picks. I think this was like a Good Morning America pick or something, but I've heard literally nobody talk about this book. I had heard zero reviews. It was on my radar early. It was one of my anticipated releases. I've had it for a bit since it came out. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And I don't really know what it's supposed to be, if it's supposed to be like a horror or surrealism or what. I just know it's about a woman who has a baby and postpartum depression and hallucinates that Margaret Wise Brown, the author of Goodnight Moon, is like living the floor above her. So I don't really know what to expect there, but that was a very popular option. And that is the book I have gone ahead and started reading because I first asked the poll on Instagram and the Upstairs House was the by and far largest winner on my Instagram polls. And I got those results in early, so I just started reading that one. So I'm gonna start there while I get to all of these top four picks in this vlog probably not but we'll do our best we'll see if we can do it I will say it's also hard to ignore that the more diverse books were not voted on as much and ended up losing and all of these top four picks are I believe white authors mostly white women and I don't think there's gonna be much diverse representation in these top four picks which is a little disappointing because I gave a pretty good array of options but I will say with June being pride month I would be breeding honey girl anyway that's a sapphic romance in the ravenous dark that has pansexual representation 
I'm sure You Must Not Miss has some sort of LGBTQIA plus representation because Katrina Leno's books usually do, but I'm not sure. And then Sorrow Land by River Solomon. That is by a non-binary author. So I'll just read all four of those next month uh, all at once. But I did not want to ignore that that happened. Uh, that is just a sign of what typically happens in the book world, unfortunately. So anyways, like I said, I did get started reading The Upstairs House by Julia Fine. I am about 90 pages into this book. It is a little bit shorter. It's like 285-ish pages long, so not even 300 pages. First impressions, I think this story is just going to be exactly what the synopsis says that it's going to be. The synopsis gives you a lot of detail about this woman, Megan, who has just had a baby. She's physically exhausted and mentally drained, also racked with guilt over her unfinished dissertation, a thesis on mid-century children's literature. Also, after she has her baby, her husband has to go away for work, so she's raising the baby alone um, and very clearly has postpartum depression in the way that it's written. And then enter a new upstairs neighbor, long dead quixotic children's book writer Margaret Wise Brown, author of the beloved classic Goodnight Moon, whose existence no one will acknowledge. Margaret has unfinished business with her former lover, the once famous socialite and actress Michael Strange, and is determined to draw Megan into the fray. As Michael joins the haunting, Megan finds herself caught in the wake of their power struggle, and until she can find a way to quiet these spirits, she and her newborn daughter are in terrible danger. Using Megan's postpartum haunting as a powerful metaphor for women's fraught relationships with their bodies and minds, Julia Fine once again delivers an imaginative and barely restrained careful musing on female desire, loneliness, and hereditary inheritances. That's a quote from the Washington Post. So I think they pretty much laid all out for you. You've got Megan, she's going through postpartum depression, she's raising this baby on her own and really struggling with it. She does have a husband but he's just away a lot so she's mostly raising the baby by herself and she starts having her first kind of hallucinations at the hospital where she thinks she sees this balloon outside the window but nobody else is seeing it and then eventually she gets home and thinks that Margaret Wise Brown is living in the floor above her in her home. As I also mentioned she was working on her dissertation for some sort of PhD program. She ends up abandoning the dissertation once she is just so fraught with the baby. And her dissertation was on children's literature, a lot about Margaret Wise Brown. And so it just kind of goes hand in hand that that's what she is hallucinating. You also get some excerpts of the dissertation throughout the book. So that is an interesting added layer and touch. I'm not sure what it's adding right now, but maybe I will see it adding more value by the end. And we haven't gotten there yet but apparently there's going to be some sort of tiff kind of tension thing of some sort between Margaret and Michael and I had to do some Wikipedia-ing to learn about this because I didn't know but Margaret Wise Brown was in a romantic relationship with Michael Strange which is a pseudonym for a actress slash poet whose real name was something I can't remember but I can look it up. Blanche Marie Louise Ulrichs was their original name. And when Megan starts talking to Margaret, Margaret says she's like building a house for Michael. Michael's always angry. There's a lot of anger around. And Megan's kind of like afraid of the energy that Margaret's presence has. She also hallucinates like posts on this forum she's looking at for moms that have to do with Margaret and like don't let her in, like be careful, blah 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 kind of thing. So there's just a lot going on right now. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I really like the writing style. I think it's written really well. It is a little bit depressing uh, for lack of a better word to be reading a character with postpartum depression so if that is triggering for you maybe stay away from this one i am finding it to be affecting my mood a little bit not terribly but it's definitely not like a fun read so that's how it's going so far i will let you know as i read more of this i also have the audiobook through scribd so i'm going to listen to the audiobook of this for a bit while i do some packing around the house and hopefully i like the narrator's voice i tried to listen to an audiobook of a different book the other day that I really wanted to read and the narrator's voice just sounded like a child and I could not do it and it was so upsetting because I really wanted to listen to that audiobook so I hope I can connect to the narrator of this one I hope it's good I hope I like it because I have a lot of packing to get done before we go to dinner tonight so that's what I'm gonna do
So I have made a lot of progress on the upstairs house. I am like two thirds of the way through the book, kind of almost done. And to be totally honest, I don't care about this book a lot right now. I'm not really interested in it anymore. I kind of saw that happening when I realized the book was gonna be pretty much exactly what was laid out in the synopsis. There's not much like mystery there left keeping me hanging on and like wanting to know what's going on. It's pretty much just exactly what I explained. Um, I do have more packages to do and I do have the audiobook for this on script so I have been listening to this a little bit. I only have two hours left of the audiobook so at two times speed just like an hour left so I'm still gonna finish it just to know what happened and so I can have something to listen to while I am packing up things because I don't have audiobooks for any of the other books on my list for the week. But yeah I'm just gonna wrap this up. I'm not feeling great about it. It's not a very enjoyable read because it's just like a heavier topic being about postpartum depression so um it's definitely it's just like a weird book because she's just hallucinating all these things and there's like so much metaphorical stuff going on and definitely this is a book that you would want to analyze getting like the dissertation parts in the story as well and then you also get like historical fiction elements of the relationship between Margaret and Michael from like 1940s as well and I'm just not loving it. To be totally honest too, I've listened to the last like, I don't know, maybe 50 pages or so on audiobook and I don't even really know if I know fully what's going on anymore. I mean really nothing's changing. She's still just hallucinating Margaret and Michael is like a threat and scary. And she's really just kind of trying to get by. Um, so yeah, I don't know about this one. I will finish it as I pack some stuff up and then I'll let you know once I get to the end if anything changed. already be Friday. It's just been a weird week. But I did finish the upstairs house last night. I did finish it on audiobook and I had the same problem of like not being able to follow along in the audiobook as well because I wasn't as interested in the story. So then I went back and like skimmed through the last part that I had listened to an audiobook if that makes any sense just to make sure I knew what happened and I'm good. I know what happened. And I feel the same way about this book but a little bit more positive. Overall, I think this is a good book. I like what this book is doing. I think it's interesting. I think the metaphors are interesting. I think the writing is really, really good. Some really solid quotes in here. And I think overall, the intention of this book, which is supported by the author's note, is to normalize the experience of postpartum. That is not the rainbows and butterflies. I instantly fell in love with my baby. I've never loved anything more. All I want to do is take care of this baby. My life is so great. What this author is trying to do is normalize the experience that a lot of other women have of having a baby and feeling the loss of your own identity as you step into the role of motherhood and how your life is completely changed. And it will be for ever from that point on and also the very serious implications of postpartum depression how it can affect your mental health and so i think all of that is really great i do think this is a good book what i did not think this book was was enjoyable <laughs> especially not right now i just wasn't in the mood for a more serious read and like that's just on me i knew this was going to be a more serious read if i knew it was about postpartum that was pretty obvious that it was not going to be a fun good old ghost haunting time. It was going to be a much more serious book, a more intricate book, and I appreciate it. I just didn't have a lot of fun with it this week, which you're not really meant to have fun with this book. So that's not the book's fault. It's mine. I would give it like four stars. I think it was well done, well executed. I just didn't give it to the appreciation that it deserves because this wasn't the book I was looking for right now, which is no one's fault but my own. So that's that. I did read a couple resources about this book, some like reviews or just like more critical like discussions. I couldn't find anything super in depth on the book, but I did find a couple articles. So I'll link those below as some resources for extra reading if you're interested in reading more about this book. And some of them are more non-spoilery, so you can read them even if you haven't read the book and you don't want the spoilers. Most of book reviews like and will avoid spoilers as much as possible in the beginning. 
anyway but i'll link this below if you're interested in reading more about this book it highlights some of the really good quotes from the book too and i also found an interview with the author so yeah i'll leave those below if you want to check those out for the upstairs house so against my better judgment the next book i started <laughs> is the push which is about a woman having kids and having like weird feelings about them in some sort of way. So you might say, Ashley, that's a terrible decision to read this book after you read a book about postpartum depression and you didn't have a good time with it. Why would you read something that sounds fairly similar? Because this was the most voted on. And so I felt obligation to make sure I squeeze this one in. It's already Friday. I'm trying to get through another two books. And so I wanted to prioritize this one because this was the most highly voted for. And I got, a little bit into it last night i'm like 35 pages in so really just getting started but i'm already feeling like i'm gonna have a better time with this one it definitely reads more like suspense and like borderline on the thriller so far i have not read the complete synopsis of this book so i don't know what it's going to be about fully i kind of just want to be surprised with this one but even right away from the first little quote or blurb thing that opens up the book i just felt like this was going to be a really impactful story really interesting story and i was already sucked in i'm gonna botch the science of this so I will just show you what the quote says so you can pause it and read it fully if you want to. But it was basically just about how with how women develop their eggs as a fetus, basically your cells are first developed in the womb of your grandmother. And I just thought that was interesting. And I could see the way that's setting up this story to be like multi-generational, talking about women. And that's like one of my favorite things is just the relationships between multiple generations of women and families. I find that so interesting. So I think I'm really gonna like it. I really like the tone, everything about the way it's written so far. We have a couple different switching kind of narrative styles. So it's written in second person so far, which I find very compelling. You just don't see that a lot. So I find it super interesting to read. We're following from the perspective of this woman who is like spying on, like watching, a family outside she's in her car outside in the street and like watching a family their house is lit up it's like Christmas time and she's just watching them be like a happy little family and so you're trying to figure out her relationship to them and then you find out that the little boy and the little girl in the fam in the house are her children so I'm guessing um, it was like her ex-husband and he's like now got a new wife or something helping raise the children that's how it starts and so you're like okay what has gone wrong why is she like spying on them yikes and then you go back in time and you start learning about her relationship with that guy and how they first got together it's all still written in second person from her perspective really cool and then you also get excerpts from the 1940s 1960s period that are following her mom's story growing up and also her grandma's love story so you are getting those multiple generations of women that is connecting the story so yeah i have no idea where it's gonna go but i'm really excited about it i really like it so far i have high hopes i think i'm gonna enjoy this more i have heard it's really serious and really triggering too so maybe i'm wrong maybe it's also going to not be great for my mental state this week but we're gonna give it a try and we're gonna see how it goes but for now i am gonna get back to work have a lot to do it's friday have monday off for memorial day and took wednesday through friday off to move so i'm only working one day next week so that means i have a lot to do today so i'm gonna get it done and i'll talk to you a little bit later Sunday. It is the end of day ish. It's like five in the evening and it's been a very long and busy day 
day. We had a lot of moving tasks to do this morning. We had to go move things in storage and drop off bookshelves and things that just aren't coming with us in the move. Then I ended up having brunch with a friend this morning and then we ended up going to Repticon, which is this reptile convention that happens in Raleigh every year that we've wanted to go to for literally years and we miss it every single year. And it just happened to be in town yesterday and today, which is like fate. So we had to go today to do our like last task of living in Raleigh, the thing we've always wanted to do. And it was lots of fun. Got to hold a chameleon. It was very cute. Now I want a chameleon. I just had a good time. Also went and dropped off a load of books at the bookstore to donate. And then I bought a couple more books that I saw there. It's just, it's been a long day. There was a Target run. There was a Lowe's run. It's everywhere. We've been all over the place. But I do have a reading update for you. I did stay up all night last night and finish the push. Uh, when I started the push yesterday, I was like 30 pages in from the first time I had picked it up. And I read the entirety, like the rest of the book all in one sitting yesterday. And I, hmm, I don't really know how I feel about it, to be honest. I'm not sure how to classify this book in genre. It's like literary suspense, I guess, is the best classification I have. But basically it's about this woman who, like I said when the novel starts, she's like, spying on like looking into this like happy looking family but it turns out it's her ex-husband and two kids and the new woman that he's with and then you go back in time and you see their entire relationship from when they first met when they had their first baby to their second baby traumatic things that happen to them you also get flashes of her mother's life growing up with uh, with a, an abusive mother like an emotionally abusive mother you get flashbacks of how she grew up with her mother and how having an absent mother affected her. So the story that is being told here, I suppose is about just like generational trauma and like how the way one mother raises her daughter affects how that woman will raise her daughter, affects how that woman will raise her daughter, etc., etc. I feel like I had some kind of profound thought when I was reading the rest of this last night at midnight. And then I kind of forgot what the point of this was that I was coming to. Cause I was thinking after reading it, like what was the point of this book? What was it trying to communicate? What was it trying to do? And I don't want to give spoilers and go into any of the, of the spoilery things that happen because there are some surprises and some shock factor in here, but it just made me feel a lot of things. It made me feel a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of annoyance. I was like rooting for the main character in a sense, but also not. And then I also was just like doubting them a lot. I wasn't sure if the main character was super reliable. And then there was something that happened in the end that kind of reversed all of that and made me even more confused. So maybe I do want to go into spoilers. Before I talk about spoilers of this book, I'll say I'm probably going to give it like a four star. Like it was enjoyable. I read it all in one go. It was definitely an addictive read. It's a really short chapter. It's really fast to get through. I like the way it was written. I really like the second person voice. I thought that made it really interesting. And I was compelled with the story. I wanted to know what was going to happen next. I don't know if it was a rewarding story. There's no like grand conclusion, I guess, which which left me hanging a little bit. But overall, uh, if you're wondering, you should read this book. It's a story sort of about a obsession and motherhood and difficult children and postpartum-ish stuff in here. It's never like straight up said postpartum, but definitely some postpartum things in here. But again, another book about like the not great experience of having a child. So now I do want to get into spoilers a little bit, just for like a minute or two. So if you don't want spoilers of the book, go to where you don't see the spoiler bar anymore. So the big thing that happens in this book is she has her first baby. The main character Blythe has her first baby, Violet, this girl, and she doesn't feel like she can bond to her. She doesn't really take care of her. Like she lets her cry and she puts in earphones and works and like neglects the baby, doesn't give the affection and love. It is just kind of resentful towards the baby for existing and what that means for her and how her value to the family has now just become being the caretaker, being the body that keeps this baby alive. And like that's where all the postpartum -y vibe stuff comes in. So that's going on. But then she has a second baby. She has a little boy and he's like cherubic, angelic, the best little thing. She loves him. She cares so much for him. It's obvious to everyone else that she loves him more than Violet. And Violet becomes increasingly difficult as she ages. She says she hates her mom. She wishes she wasn't with her. She hates the baby. She doesn't want the baby to be around because the mom loves the baby boy. And the big moment that happens in this book is an incident where the mom is taking the two children. They're walking the street. The baby boy is in a stroller. The girl's walking beside of her and she has a tea and they're getting ready to cross the street. They're at an intersection and Violet like pulls the mom's arm to make her drop her tea all over herself 
like her hot scalding tea and that makes her release the stroller and then the stroller rolls into the road and the baby gets hit by a car and dies. So that's like the objective description of what happened in that incident but she the mother is also saying that she thinks she saw violet and her pink little mittens push the stroller because the curb should have a lip like a lilt to it where the stroller doesn't usually just like roll she has to push it to get it to go into the street and so she thinks she saw violet like push that and then she remembers the week before violet was asking if cars always stop at red lights and that's the only time they stop and so she thinks this was like a calculated move on her daughter's part to kill her baby brother and she tells that to the cops when everything happens and the cops come to the scene, the hospital, she tells that to her husband, he doesn't believe her. And it just becomes like a thing that she thinks and knows, like she thinks her daughter is evil, that she has something evil inside of her and that she killed her baby brother. And nobody else seems to be on that same page with her. But the daughter also, like you just don't know, you just don't know what to trust in this book because the daughter also has a lot of complaints from teachers at school, like she's got a lot of problems going on, but you're reading from the perspective of the mother. And so all you get is this lens where she has convinced herself her daughter has evil inside of her, her daughter killed her baby brother, her daughter is bad, her daughter hates her, her daughter wants to cause harm, like she's worried for her daughter to be around sharp objects, things like that. Ultimately, this makes her and her husband end up splitting up, the loss of the baby, her feeling badly about Violet, he starts cheating on her with his assistant at work and she finds out and they get separated and divorced. That like all happens in like the first half of the book, I guess, and then the second half of the book, Violet gets up to like age 10 or 11 or something, is the oldest that we see her. And the dad ends up marrying that woman who was the assistant and having another baby with her. They have a little baby boy. And the mom gets really obsessed with the idea of like wanting to know what she's like, that new woman that he likes better, like, who has become this perfect mom to their baby like everything she couldn't be and she finds out that she goes to this mom group and so she like wears a wig and goes and befriends her and becomes really good friends for like a year and learns all about her family her baby everything that's going on whatever blah 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 things go on tensions increase you're like oh gosh is he gonna find out like is that woman gonna find out who she is and what the connection is and it's weird and ultimately she does because she ends up running the husband and then where the book ends the mom like asks the other woman if she's ever noticed anything about about Violet like if she ever thinks there's anything bad about her she feels worried about her baby's safety and you can't tell the way it's written it's like building the suspense where you don't know if she does feel that way or not and so you're waiting to kind of get this confirmation from another outside source to get some validity as to whether or not that Violet does have something evil inside of her or if you know this is just the mother's impression so all of that I was thinking okay this is an interesting critical examination of like what can happen to a mother who just like has these ideas and like the way she raises the child without affection because she already has it in her mind that this baby's evil because of how she was raised how her mother was raised like there's this generational issue in her family of how mothers are to their daughters and they don't you know show them affection or love them or connect and bond and she's just convinced herself her daughter's evil but like maybe her daughter's just acting out because of the way she is lacking affection and love from her mother Mother, and like she says she hates her mom maybe she hates her because she's not getting loved and she acts out of school because she's not getting enough attention you know maybe she didn't push the stroller maybe she just like convinced herself of that because she's so convinced that her daughter is evil and bad like maybe that was just an accident and like you can read this story and go back and think of all these things that have happened and say yeah I think she just convinced herself her daughter was bad her daughter wasn't really bad or you can read it and say like oh this is a creepy kid story where like the daughter's creepy and so it was very ambiguous this whole time of not really knowing and and then right at the end, you get an epilogue of a year and a half later after everything that's happened and the woman that the dad's with calls the mom and says that something happened to her baby. And that's what it leaves the book at. And so you're like, oh, did Violet do something? Or like now has this woman convinced herself that that girl is bad because it's just like seeping through. So I think ultimately, I just don't know what like this book was trying to do. I don't know <laughs> what story it was trying to tell because it was so ambiguous the whole time that I couldn't feel like I got some like morsel of truth or like theme or story. Like I just don't know what I was supposed to take from this story, which is fine. I'm cool with ambiguous books, but like, I don't know. I was just like, I guess this was a good book. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I think I'll be thinking about this one for a while. I definitely want to read some more reviews and listen to other people chat about this book just to get some other opinions on what people thought about it. But yeah, I guess overall it was a good book, but I'm just a little bit confused by the ambiguous nature of it. So since it is now Sunday, I usually wrap these vlogs up on Sunday so I could post tomorrow but I think I want to read one more book because I've only read two books that you chose and the whole point is this is you choose what I read for a week and I feel like I should read three books so I'm gonna try to squeeze one more book in so the other two books I had in the top four are The Hunting Wives by May Cobb and The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman personally um I would be fine with reading either of these they're about the same length 
and like font size, I think I could get through them equally as fast. The Hunting Wives did get a little bit more votes, so I could prioritize based off of that. Um, I do think I'm going to like the Thursday Murder Club better, so I could prioritize based off of that. But part of me also thinks if I think I'm going to really like this, maybe I'm going to want to read it slower and savor it. So I don't know. So what I did was this morning I posted a poll on my Instagram to see which one you guys would want me to squeeze in in the last part of this vlog. So I'm going to check that now. I checked it right after I first launched the poll and The Hunting Wives was winning immediately, but it's been like six hours since then, so it could have very well changed. Oh, nope, it looks like The Hunting Wives still won. The Hunting Wives got 62% of the votes. So I guess that is the one I will be squeezing in and seeing if I can read this book tonight. Probably will not be able to finish it tonight. It's already five o'clock and I've got more packing to do. And I don't have this on audiobook. Maybe I'll see if I can find a way to finagle this on audiobook and that could help. Mm, I don't know, but we'll see what I can do with this bad boy. I don't really know a ton about it. I just know it's something like suburban-y women, wives, rich people drama, kind of. It says it's about this woman, Sophie, who left behind an envy-inspiring career and the stressful competitive life of big city Chicago to settle down with her husband and young son in a small Texas town. Seems like a perfect life, great neighborhood, rural community. But she soon realizes that life is now too quiet and she's feeling bored and restless. Then she meets Margot Banks, an alluring socialite who's part of an elite clique secretly known as the Hunting Wives. Sophie is completely drawn to Margot and swept into her mysterious world of late night target practice and dangerous partying. As Sophie's curiosity gives way to full-blown obsession, she slips further away from the safety of her family and deeper into this nest of vipers. When the body of a teenage girl is discovered in the woods where the Hunting Wives meet, Sophie finds herself in the middle of a murder investigation and her life spirals out of control. So that sounds kind of fun. Interesting that this is another one on obsession. And we've got quite a theme going on here with like, we had two about like mothers with like postpartum-y vibes. One of them had obsession. Now we're going from an obsession-y book to another obsession-y book. So interesting themes trickled through here. But I think I'm gonna enjoy this one fairly well. It sounds like it's gonna be a fun book. Sounds like it might be a little cheesy, but like I'm cool with that. That's always fun to have like a quick kind of cheesy throw it or fly through but who knows maybe it could impress me maybe it's a little more high class than i expected but i will put this one up give uh give them my best go to see how quickly i can get through it and update you once i've started reading of energy so I'm gonna do my best to wrap this up efficiently but I did finish the hunting wives oh gosh I did finish the hunting wives today I read this way quicker than I thought I was going to I absolutely flew through it I didn't even have time to give you a middle of the book update because I was just flying through today's Monday so I read it in two days I guess or like two major sittings and I was pretty I was pretty disappointed <laughs> I was pretty let down with this book I have heard good things about it I've seen good reviews from people I've heard it's a fun thriller it was like a three star read for me. It was fine. Uh, I thought it was super predictable. I thought it was really slow paced. And overall, I was just kind of bored. I just like didn't really care a lot about what was going on because I thought it was just so predictable that I was just racing the character to the end. Like, come on, we all know what happened here. Let's just get to the end. I can't even remember if I told you what this book is about, but I have a much better understanding because I didn't even 
didn't really know before. But it's about this group of women in Texas who they call themselves the Hunting Wives. Every Friday they get together and they do skeet shooting together. And it turns out that they do more than just skeet shooting. That could be a bit of a spoiler. So I won't tell you now what they do, but I'll go into spoilers in a minute and I'll put a spoiler bar up. But our main character, Sophie, has a husband, Graham, and a son, Jack. And they just moved back to the area. It's a really like suburban small town. She gets really bored and she gets really enamored with one of the main women of the group, Margot, who is just like very attractive, very successful she just becomes like obsessed with her so this becomes a big odd obsession and she kind of just starts acting like a teenager again staying out really late with them drinking partying her husband's like i'm not trying to be a controlling husband but like could you chill out with all that and then a dead body shows up it is a surprise who ends up dead so i won't tell you who the dead body is on margo's property and so it seems like this woman might be involved especially our main character ends up becoming like a prime suspect and then she has to try to get her way out of that so that's what's going on in the book I thought it was certainly fine. I thought it's a good summer read. Definitely has summery vibes to it. If you're looking for a summery thriller, I think this is a good option. I'm glad I read it quickly because like I said, it's a little slower paced. Like it takes to like 55 to 60% of the way through before you get to the dead body showing up. So all that first part of the book is like the buildup of her getting enamored with the group of the women and the things that they do together and her husband getting a little annoyed with it all. Her becoming very obsessed with Margot um like building all that up before the dead body shows up and then the rest of that is like her trying to evade looking like she killed this person this book was also way steamier than i expected it was very raunchy lots of sex scenes lots of just like problematic behavior you know there's just like a lot happening i'll give you the spoiler real quick of what i'm talking about so if you don't want to know skip to where you don't see the spoiler bar anymore but essentially these women while they shoot skeet on friday nights after that they go out and they like basically cheat on their husbands but they have two rules they only use first names and they don't go all the way but like they do go all the way with these people and Margot ends up fooling around with like one of the other women's sons who is 18 he is of age but very inappropriate very weird happenings going on so yeah this is a pretty raunchy thriller i did not know that going in <laughs> just a fair warning if you're not into that there's a lot of steaminess to this but overall i thought it was fine i'm glad i read it in the summer it's more or i guess it's not the summer yet it's the spring but it's more of like a warm weather read i feel like it would be a nice beach read maybe but i just didn't feel like it was complex enough i didn't feel confused i felt like i knew who the bad people were and who the good people were and who was manipulating what situations to be what it just wasn't very like intricate and complex with red herrings and guiding them one way and then oh gosh twists like there weren't many twists to the story but i do think this was a debut from may cobb Oh no, it is one. It is not her debut. <laughs> she has another book. Maybe this is like her second book. I don't know. I would probably read more from this author. This book just like didn't blow me away, but that's fine. Not every thriller has to. So that is it for this reading vlog. It went a little longer than I thought it would, but honestly not bad that I wrapped it up on a Monday and I got through three books. Didn't really dislike any of the books. I didn't have the most fun with the upstairs house. It wasn't the most fun read, but it's not supposed to be, but I definitely appreciated that book. And then the push was definitely interesting, definitely sucked me in, kept me really absorbed in reading really fast, but not the most satisfying of endings with the more ambiguous nature of it. And then The Hunting Wives was just like, okay. So lots of four-ish star reads. I don't think I said my rating for The Hunting Wives, but I would give it like a three star. So lots of three and four star thrillery suspense books this week. Not a bad week. So I hope you enjoyed getting to choose what I read for a week. I thought that was a lot of fun. I love doing little polls to say what books people are more interested in to guide my reading on just one-off occasion. So it was fun to do it for a whole week's worth of reading with three different books. I am not surprised you guys chose thrillers. <laughs> you guys seem to love when I read thrillers on this channel. So I'm not surprised it was steered that way. But the rest of the books on my list, I will be hoping to get to in June. Also for my next reading vlog, it's probably gonna be a little more casual because it is gonna include moving and I'm already tired thinking about it. So you can look forward to that. I'm going to start filming that one tomorrow or the next week which will include the move, moving in, getting to know the area, settling in. So it'll be fun. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!